All right, folks, welcome back. Game 11 of our brand new series, AlphaGo versus the World. And today, we've got a new player. And to tell you about our new player, we've got Michael Redmond. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is Cheng Hao. And he's a five down at the time of the game. I think later he went to six down. And um, he's, uh, he's not really... Um, have, have such a um, strong style, like he, he could play big moyos sometimes, and sometimes he took territory, so he, he was a pretty flexible player. Mm. And so at the time he was playing human moves, but he quickly moved to play uh, AI moves after that. I noticed mm -hmm. that changed in his games. But in this game, you're going to see a very territory-oriented uh, style that he plays in this particular game. And we're going to see how AlphaGo deals with that, because AlphaGo has special ideas for that kind of play. So the human player, he has black, and AlphaGo plays a Kakari. Already we see black playing the pincer. So this is a point where nowadays people would just press here. This pressing here is supposed to be a very big move. And... Now we like to play it. Like I, I, um, I always played moves like this, but there was a time when people thought that it was sort of giving white too much solid territory. Right. But this has become the standard way of playing. And of course, black five is stopping white from doing the same thing to black, just giving white that upper side and taking the potential on the left and right sides is the way we do it now. But in this game, black plays a pincer. If we go back, um, a few decades. The, there's an, a whole era where this move was also a very popular move, so it's not really the, something that I can complain about. And so black crawls here, and again you see that white is playing that pressing move here, and this is the way that computer programs like to deal with just about any pincer. And when you do it with an AI, it's going to give white a good percentage. But at this mm -hmm. point it's not so bad for black. It's still a pretty close game. So kicking here is probably taking too much territory. I think black should have pushed on the outside, mm -hmm. just building towards potential. And this is uh, something that has really changed in the way we play Go nowadays. Because we, um, at the time of this game, in 2016, there was a strong tendency to grab territory and say, um, and just deal with the weak groups that came up. Invade sure. your opponent's moyo and stuff like that. And it was a very popular strategy. And with the time limits getting shorter and shorter and shorter, it was also very effective. It was it was became made the games very sharp and difficult for people to actually go and kill those groups that were in danger. And I think it gave an advantage to the player who was in trouble, who was trying to make a life, you might say. Mm -hmm. At least at the professional level. But it, this kind of tactics does not work very well against AIs. Um, so black takes territory, but you can see white is just taking develop, taking potential um, in return. So already white, it looks like white might have a slight advantage here, but at this point it's, it's still very small. Black slides here, this is an interesting move. Mm. And white attaches. So white is going to give the corner to black and it's going to try to shut down the side. This is a point where black has a choice of this move, or this move, or this move. And this was the game move. This looks like a reasonable move, actually. Sure. If black plays here, um, white will actually uh, play like this to cut black off. And this would probably not be so good. Um, it would be a reasonably strong position for white on the outside. Mm -hmm. So wedging here, I think that's OK. Um, white does get a nice position on the outside. and plays this big move. At this point of the game, white does seem to have a slight advantage. Like mm -hmm. it would be one, maybe one point, maybe one or two points. So it's not something that, um, for me, it's not something that I can easily calculate. I might have a slight feeling that I would prefer to play with white, mm -hmm. uh, but it would be something that's impossible for me to put a point value on. Of course, uh, come, some AIs will give you a point value and say that white's something like, it's five points for black before Comey or something like that. In which case, white would win by one and a half points. Um, I don't really know exactly how accurate that is. I sort of, I sort of believe it, though, in a way. Mm. 
it's, it's yeah. not it's not something that I'm going to be able to take to a win to a victory in any case. So it's it's right. just something that I respect in a way, but I know it it doesn't really <laughs> um, refer to to what I'm going to do for with the rest of the game. Right. And so white plays here. The game is still okay for black until um, actually this point is uh, a point where I I really love this. Yeah. I think now people would just play the Kakari. At the time, right. people didn't like the fact that white could kick and play a pincer, but jumping here into the center is a big move, too. Uh, this would kill, uh, keep black, black fairly close to white, although I'm saying that white has a slight advantage here. It's probably just a point or so. And so it's it's nothing that um, I would be worried about in game. And this, this is probably black's best variation, but who would think of white playing here? This was a, an outstanding move. Wow. It builds White's wow. Moyo in the lower left area. From this point on, White will be focusing on this, I guess you might call it a quarter of the board. This area here is where mm -hmm. White's going to be focusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of hard to see that coming at this point. Like you would expect White to be crawling or something. But when White plays here, this is changing the, the viewpoint, you might say. And that uh, seeing this sequence that White has played, it becomes apparent that with sort of stones scattered all over that upper area, that area was not a very important area to start with, provided all of the groups can manage to survive. It's not sure. important. It's not an area where white had potential to build territory. Although um, I would have probably had a tendency to, to want to make that part of my moyo. The fact that white is um, focusing on this area is so much more efficient. It's, uh, this is really amazing. Actually, and white plays these forcing moves here. Black clamps one. You can see black is um, trying to deal with these stones at the same mm -hmm. time, save the corner. So it makes sense in a way. And white covers here. You can see white's just taking this moyo one step further every time. So calm, so calm and cool. And this is threatening the weak point here. There's a there's a weak point white can bump against black here and cut mm -hmm. black off. Mm -hmm. So black answers that. And white plays here. This is just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful game. You're going to see this. And I love, this love point, it. This just looks like a, a very talented human player. And black hasn't really done so much wrong, um, but is completely outplayed at this point. I do want to make one point here. When black extended here, this was a very slow move. So this yeah. was a slow move that really cost black the game. Um, and after white plays for the Moyo, it's it's well over, um, it's probably close to 70% for white. Mm. So maybe if, maybe black would have done a little better if black had played here um, and put just a little bit more pressure on that white group on the upper side. At this point in the game, it's not as if these stones are, are gonna get into trouble anyway. So mm -hmm. playing on the second line here was, uh, was a bit um, too slow, but the way white takes advantage of it, just speeding up, so with such, natural moves and I love this large nice move that white just played at this point the game is already over and I think black can see it but of course human players would dive into the white moyo and just erase it and it would still be a complicated game mm -hmm. but as we're going to see this this is not going to work in this game so I'll stop here and uh, leave the rest for the book yeah, and, and it's reminding me of something I've seen, you know, this was when we were looking at pro games, we used to call boa constrictor, uh, you know, go, where where just no matter how you kind of struggled, you know, the, the stronger player is just like, oh, you want to go over there? I'll just go over here, or go over here, and, and, and just like nothing you can do. And this is, like you say, just a beautiful, beautiful game. I can't wait to see the rest of the commentary on this one. So oh, yeah. thank you, Michael. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time.